work over the years and especially you know um within these past six months of really just learning everything that i could possibly find on on um on, on productivity and and really getting things done in the fastest way possible and um that's what you really that's what you've been learning throughout these five weeks so um so this is fun um <clears throat> before I, before I, um, I jump into um in, into this just to sort of give you an overview so so far um after this week this is the fifth week after this is done um, I'm giving everybody coaching calls, sort of like how, um, you know, same thing that Raymond is doing and, you know, a lot of other people do as well, part of their courses. Um, so I'm giving everybody um, five weeks and then this is basically where we can get on a call and you can, you know, tell me specifically, you know, how can you apply productivity and some of the things that we've been learning throughout your, um, you know, throughout whatever project that you're working on right now. So I think that's the value added. Um, I'll do a little bit more training. I'm, I may be, I may point out specific nuances and um, and um, in areas from the things that we've learned to uh, uh, to to really help you in whatever project or goal that that you're looking to achieve. Because I don't want to make this, I don't want to make the course too too long. I really just want to give you what you need, the tools that you can go and just go out and grab and just use. So um, that was really my point, but the but the but the ongoing coaching, which is going to be um, it'll be weekly, but it'll be a little bit shorter. It maybe be you know twenty minutes to probably um, a half hour, um, depending on how long it goes. Um, but it's really just to get on and just help you specifically with your situation. Because here I'm more teaching, you more asking questions about the the things that you're learning. But in the but the, um, but when we do the the coaching calls, that's going to be more along the lines of all okay, right you know this is this is what i'm dealing with how can i use this how can i apply this on um for what i've been learning so uh, i mean to my specific situation okay all right so all right so we already about 13 14 minutes past the hour so we're going to go ahead and, and get started okay <clears throat> all right hello we are back week number five overcoming obstacles man this has been a great journey this this journey has really been a, a way for you to just continuously go deeper and deeper within your productivity within your habits within your routines with changing your mindset and as you continue to go forward and and, and move forward and step and march towards your goals i hope hopefully these strategies has really been have really been impactful to you and um just going through these different weeks is is um it could definitely be um a mind shift because you know you're taking you're you're taking the current beliefs that you know about getting things done and about being productive and you're really having to to put those aside put those to the side in order to adopt the beliefs of our world's highest achievers super achievers gurus um you know the people that's that's at really at the top of their field the world's best entrepreneurs and how are they continuously getting things done and staying on track and being the highest performers in the industry and it's really because they're they're doing these things so in order to continuously move forward you know you got to continuously come continuously learn um, and just just make sure that you're actually not just uh, passively listening to the information and that you're applying it. So the fact that you made it to week number five is a huge deal. Most people start things, start programs, start books, and they never finish them. So if you made, so if you're watching this video, you made it this far. You, I congratulate you because you've already. Um, you've already accomplished a lot, just just cognitively at least understanding it and taking yourself to the next level. So specifically in this week, we're going to go over, in week number five, we're going to go over how millionaires obliterate obstacles every single day. There's certain things that they're doing that's allowing them to overcome these obstacles so they could continue to stay focused on their goal. How do they really do that? What are the things that they're doing? Also, how to destroy distractions. We're going to be looking at that because, I mean, as you know, most people are not getting where they want to get to is because there's too many distractions in a way. So what are some good ways in order to remove those so you can get more things done that you want to pay attention to? Putting it into procrastination, that's, this is a huge one that many people face um, trying to get to their goals. How to destroy self-doubt 
and the negative thoughts that that's recurring in your mind. And with this one, it's just really one big elephant in a room that you need to understand. And if you get this one concept, then self doubt and negative thoughts will not be an issue to you. And then also, ultimately, how to overcome life's challenges as well. So we're going to talk about these things in the next videos. All right. So put on your seatbelt. Uh, uh, grab some popcorn. Get your pen and paper out. And um, and let's get ready to jump in to week number five of overcoming obstacles. All right, so that's the first. That was just the first little intro, quick video. Um, I'm sure um, if anybody has any questions, you can ask that. But that was just pretty much straightforward. Pretty much straightforward for that one. So I'm sure there's not going to be any questions, but there, if there is, you can ask. All right, so let's go ahead and get in. Let's jump into it. Make up a little bit for lost time. <clears throat> okay. All right, so. All right, so how millionaires obliterate obstacles each and every day. See, um, there's there's a lot of um, you know if you if you're into you know personal development and and learning and grinding and doing those things as far as you know developing them, your mind, you know that there's there is a there's a common set of traits that many people who are just and it's not even necessarily millionaires. I've been I've been framing it from from that point of you know um, throughout the webinar, but I I don't want you to under I don't want you just to think that it's just only millionaires because there's people who are at the top of their fields that don't make the best money, you know, but they are but they are still making a big difference you know, within their community and they, they are making a big difference within the world, right? You know, you could think of somebody like, you know, like like a Mother Teresa, right? Or a Gandhi or, you know, Martin Luther King or how, you know, these these are people who what you wouldn't necessarily say, you know, they would they weren't these are people that weren't rich, right? They they weren't, you know, millionaires, billionaires, right? But these are people that continue to change the world. So how how did they do that? You know, how so I don't want you to just get caught up on the millionaire part. Get I want you just to understand that people are high performing within their field. What are the things that they are actually doing in order to overcome those obstacles? Because there's no one who's any different. The same way how we don't sometimes don't feel like getting up in the morning, the same way we feel like, you know, we you might have to do something throughout the day and it's like oh, I don't feel like doing that now. Well, you know, the same ways we get distracted. Are, are the same things that happen to millionaires, but the difference between millionaires and the difference between people who are living mediocre are they they know how to overcome obstacles. They know how when when obstacles are are in their way, they know how to move past it. They know how to get around it. So, what are those what are those ways? What are these particular things that they're doing in order to overcome those obstacles? So that's what we're going to talk about now. So the first first thing. If you if you're about to hit an obstacle, or if you're hitting an obstacle on your way to your goals right now, first thing I want you to do is I want you to have perspective. I want you to have a perspective of, okay, why am I running into this obstacle? Especially if it's a recurring thing, why do I keep running into this obstacle? You know, why do I why every time you know I'm trying to I'm trying to lose weight, you know, I find myself eating more, right? Or how, how come you know every time I'm, I'm you know, I'm in my business and, you know, I've been running this business for years, but, you know, why am I not making any money? You know, why? So you have to, certain things that you have to, you have to look at it in a particular um, perspective. So some like a perspective might be, okay, well, and really stop and think about this. And it actually might be a good, it might actually be good when you're running into the same wall to think about, okay, and even write this down. All right. Why am I running into this obstacle? So it can be, you know, you might be thinking, okay, well, Maybe this could be a sign from God, or maybe this could be a sign from a higher power, or whoever you believe in. On why, why do I continue? Why is this continuously being and presented in front of me? Because if it's if it's continuously coming up, it might be something that you have to deal with. Because sometimes people have problems or obstacles coming their way, and they just try to avoid it. Oh, I'm not going to deal with that person, right? Oh, I, I don't want to deal with this. I don't, I, you know, I'll look at it later. I'll get to it later. Or sometimes people they think that if you continuously avoid their problems or if they continue to avoid their obstacles that they're just going to go away. But anything that you try to avoid or push away is only going to come back louder and come back stronger. So many times you have to deal 
with those problems. It's not they're not just going to go away. So you might want to think about okay, well, you know, maybe it's hard for me to you know to make money in my business because um, you know because maybe I'm only trying I'm only trying to make it this one way. You know, maybe maybe I'm not you know I maybe I'm not following the right advice. Maybe I'm not. Um, you know, maybe this is a sign for me to try to learn something different. Maybe this is a sign for me to do something different. Like we all know that the, the, the definition of insanity, right? Is doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. Like this is one guy that I know who, um, you know, happens just to be my fiance's friend, but he's trying to come up and he's trying to be a rapper, right? But the craziest part about him being a rapper is he doesn't want to, he, he doesn't believe in social media. So he's trying to, so he wants to, he wants to, he, you know, he wants to be known the fifth, the quickest and the fastest way possible, but he doesn't believe in social media. And we know social media right now is like, you know, you can write or, you know, you could put a picture up or you could do a post and I can get out to easily three, four, five hundred, a thousand people. And, you know, you telling a thousand people, you know, about your album uh, you know, trying to walk up to a thousand people could take you all day or all week. So, you know, so it, it could be about your belief system. So just think about, just look at it from different perspectives and say, okay, why am I not uh, accomplishing my goal? Usually that, that'll be uh, a good, a good first step in order for you to take, you know, the, the next step towards getting to making progress towards your goal. Next, you all, you, with next thing that I noticed that they do after all my research is that they attack it from all angles. That means that they anything that they can do in order to accomplish their goal, they're gonna do it. Any anything, if something breaks, if something doesn't work, if something goes wrong, they don't just give up. And what I've noticed really about most people is that if something doesn't work, they be like, ah, well, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I couldn't do it, or I, I didn't do it, or they really just give up. But what I've noticed from from successful people is like, okay, you know, all right, what can I do in order to continuously make this happen like because when i was watching um i don't know if you all know who um i don't know if you know who who um russell brunson is right but he's he is uh he has a youtube show called funnel hacking and he had particularly is interesting because he had an episode where he was basically you know doing a you know launch of his new book and as he was talking to you know thousands and thousands of people online and um, he was being interviewed by different gurus, by different experts, right? And telling them, and all of these people are excited, asking questions. And then in the middle of a presentation, you know, the internet just starts getting choppy. Internet goes down. So he's literally, this is costing him thousands of dollars because as he's talking about his book, people are getting excited and people are buying the book. And um, But as the internet goes down, and he's in his office, and he, maybe he has employees and everything, he's... He's basically freaking out. He's calling up, you know, he's calling up the, you know, the, 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 you know, the internet company. He's trying to get things fixed, but nothing is working. So instead of just saying, you know what, and shutting down shop for the day, be like, you know what, the internet is not working today. Let me try it again tomorrow or whatever the case is. What he did was he decided to shut down the operation for about 30 minutes or however long it took him to, to put, you know, to shut down shop and then go home and then use his at home internet to do it. Now, mind you, he, he was in an office where, you know, it, it was fancy. He had three, four monitors up. You know, he had, you know, people, uh, you know, around them helping him, you know, answering questions, doing different things. But instead of just shutting it down for the day because the internet didn't work and just being upset and throwing his arms in the air and saying, ah, the internet provider is messing me up, da 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 da, and cursing them out and being upset, he said, you know what? I'm just going to go home because I know my home internet works. So he brought his whole crew and he brought, and he brought his team into his house. To where he was able to get back on, start doing more interviews, and he didn't have the three, four fancy monitors. He had just one laptop computer, and he was still banging it out from there. So I just thought that as I was watching that, I thought that was just a good way for him to, you know, just fix the problems from every single angle. Okay, so if it doesn't work from this way, okay, well, you know, who can I can't get the money to 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 fund this, but um, you know. Maybe who can I help put together this campaign or this fund? Who will help? Who will, who will want to support? What kind of money can I can I go and raise? I always I remember Robert Kiyosaki saying, if you read his, his book Rich Dad Poor Dad, I remember him saying that um, you know there was a time where him and his wife 
they wanted to obtain, I can't remember specifically, but there was something that he wanted to obtain. I don't know if it was a, a, a specific business or property but, or a car. It was something that they wanted to obtain. And instead of just going to the bank and getting a loan, right, that could have been one option or borrowing it from somebody. What they decided to do was go out and hustle and make the money. So I think they was like selling all types of things and, you know, anything that they can to generate the money in order to pay for the car or whatever that item was instead of just borrowing the money. So always think about things from different angles. And I've noticed that um, successful people do that a lot. Also, you got to be able to destroy distractions. If you fig, if you figure, if you, if it's hard for you to, 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 to overcome something, a lot of the times it can be because you're being pulled in so many different directions. So it's about, it's about staying laser focused. And we're gonna actually talk. I'm not gonna even de jump too much into this because we're actually gonna get more into destroying distractions. But just know that to overcome obstacles is a lot easier when you're focused on it and you yet. Your brain is not scattered all over the place, you, you know, Instagram, Facebook, and all this other stuff. If you're doing something, be in it. But we're going to talk more about that. And then also leverage others. You know, you don't have to do everything yourself. We talked about this in an earlier video, right, in an earlier week where we said, you know, be able to leverage others. People who are making getting the most done, they have others that's helping them. They have coaches. They have, you know, affiliates. They have, you know, friends. They have families. They have teams. They have... You know, they have people in, in resources that they that they're using to help them overcome these obstacles. So you have to be able to do the same. So don't always think when you run into something, it's just me. Like I, I have to be able to just do this myself. Be able to look at how you can leverage other people. Look how you can leverage other technology. Look how you can leverage other things that's going to help you overcome this obstacle easier. Especially if it's somebody who already been through that obstacle, it would be great cuz you're leveraging a person to help you, but you're also leveraging someone who been through the same struggle or obstacle that you've been through and they can help you navigate through. So, these are the four some of the four biggest Things that I've seen that millionaires do when it comes to having to overcome obstacles every day and this is what continuously keeps them moving forward and progressing so homework for this for, for this video is just see just think about what are you struggling with right now and how could you use these four things how could you think about it in a different way how could you look at it from different angles and see okay what you how many different ways can I solve this problem you know, think about it from, okay, well, all right, am I staying, am I being focused when I'm actually trying to overcome this is hard, but am I really giving it my complete focus? You know, I want you to think about that. If you're not, think about, okay, all right, list out the ways that, that you're being distracted. And then the next time you go and, and face that challenge, make sure you remove those distractions. And then also think about, okay, who can support me? Who, what kind of leverage can I get to overcome this obstacle and to be able to, to help me through the situation? If you do these things, you're going to find yourself overcoming obstacles a lot easier. All right. That's the break. So that was how to overcome and obliterate obstacles every day. So ah, that's fun, man. And I see, I see I see these things over and over again, you know, people doing it. So it's um yeah, it's I love it. I love it. Does anybody have any questions um on on that section? You know, I know that probably could have been a little bit straightforward, but I mean if you have any questions, you know, I'm here. Um about any of these, you know, the power perspective, attacking it from all angles, um, destroying obstacles and and, and leveraging others. How do you destroy obstacles? How do how do I personally destroy obstacles? Yeah. Uh, well, that's actually the next session that we get into. So, okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll I'll jump into it. But um, but but personally, uh, personally, um, destroy well destroy obstacles or oh, that's really distractions. But distractions and obstacles is very close. Um, but personally, for me. Um, uh, a lot of my obstacles are, are really distractions, to be honest, you know, it's sometimes it gets hard, especially with, with social media and, yeah. um, you know, um, you know, you got emails coming in and text messages. And so it can, it can really be, um, it can really be hard. But for me, I just, um, uh, I remember saying somebody telling me that, um, um, I forgot who I was listening to, but they basically said it's easier to avoid temptation 
than 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 to resist it. So that means that if you if you can avoid don't don't walk in a donut shop to get coffee yeah. and you know it's it's hard for you to you know it's hard for you to resist the donuts and you're trying to fight the donuts because at the end of the day that's burning your willpower right don't even go to that if you need to get coffee don't go to dunkin donuts go <laughs> go somewhere else to get your coffee because it's better to avoid temptation than to resist it so that's that's all i try to do i really just try to avoid it the best way i can so i'm actually give you some some good strategies coming up into the, in, in the uh, next section thank you hello Yes. Who who is this? Is this patience? Oh, it's patience. Hey. Hey, what's going on? I got commentary. Um, a lot and nothing. So I think I have the opposite issue, right? So even though I'm kind of not really tied, like I have the ability to just ignore my phone or like I'll just turn the volume all the way down um, so I can try to like, avoid obstacles right but at the same time or distractions rather but at the same time a lot of the resources that I use in the network do you have the TV on? Hey, 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 on social media so hey, it's like I find myself uh, hey patient yeah, yeah do you have the TV on? Oh. But I'm also doing hair, and I have a guest. Oh, so okay, okay, all right. Is it really loud? No, no, that's, yeah, I mean, it is a little bit, but I can hear you, though. Uh, continue. You, you can continue. Um, no, I was just saying that, you know, how do, like, how do I balance that without being distracted? Because if I have to go on social media to pull my resources and what have you, mm -hmm. Then of course everything else on my top line, timeline is gonna light up. Right. And I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's hard. You know, it's hard, especially if you're doing. You know, like like we like we all on right now. Like everybody who's on right now, we like we're all entrepreneurs, right? So it's hard when you when you're doing business on social media and you are just trying to stick to what you you know to to what you know you should be doing. Because once you get on social media, it's easy to start scrolling and liking and commenting. And next thing you know, 15, 20 minutes past, 30 minutes, and um, small and small holes sink the ship, right? So if you doing right. that... Six, but I don't want to be rude and not acknowledge people when they're like, you know, maybe I should put that on the schedule too. Like make a block of time to respond to posts. Stuff like right, that. and you know what? You know what I'm gonna do, and that's actually gonna take us into the next section, because uh, I'm gonna tell you exactly what what you can do, um, what you can do with that, on, on how to, on how to make you don't how to not, you know, seem rude, but you know you're also, um, you know you'll also be able to you know respond to people and get and get but also get things done, you know what I'm right. saying? Because if you think about it, all all the pe all the favorite people that you follow. Do they answer every single comment? No, right? Like, uh, e like ET is not answering every single it comment. Like it, it looked like they answering every single comment, it, especially it, some of the more popular people. Scroll, scroll through, scroll through the timeline. Trust me, I, I, this is what this is what I do. So trust me when I tell you they're not commenting because they're getting hundreds of comments. They, they don't, they're not commenting with every single one. Now, starting off, starting off though. You know, because we all starting off in our career. So as we as we're doing this, we got to make sure that you do start, you do comment, and you do make sure you reply to people. But the misconception is you have to do it all soon as they soon as they write you. You have to do it, and and that that's 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 you know that's a misconception. You don't you don't have to soon as they write it because that means that you have to be on your phone all day, and and that's that's killing your that's killing your progress. So trust me, cause that's what I trust me that, cause I felt the same way, you know. But um, as I really learned, I'm like, man, how are these how are these guys they have millions and millions of followers and 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 hundreds and thousands of comments. How are they doing it? And um, and they're not even responding to everybody. So I'm I'm a, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this next section. Okay, cool. All right, all right. <clears throat> All right, in this video, we're talking about how to destroy distractions. What do you really need to do in order to keep yourself focused and make sure that 
distractions are not taken away from your creative ability. Make sure that distractions are not taken away from your family, not, not taken away from you being able to do your mission and your cause in the world. How do you get rid of these things? Well, how do you st stay focused and concentrate on the things that's really most important to you, that's most important to your legacy, that's most important to your business, or most important to your health, or most important to your goals? What do you? How do you really destroy those and get those out the way and move those and clear those from your path so you can stay focused and walk the path that you're meant to walk and do within this world? So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. All right, so we're talking about the weapons of mass distraction. What are these? That's everything. All social media that you could think of or, you know, different websites, you know, Facebook, Amazon, YouTube, everything that you could think of, right? And, you know, the craziest thing about, you know, today's, today's age and world is we are in an age where you, now, before, I'll put it to you this way. When, it first, when the internet first came, it, you didn't really have that many websites to go to. Right, so you can click on one thing, you might click on one page, two pages, but now there's so many wormholes in, in the internet that you could click on one link and be reading something, but then a video pops up, and then a video look interesting, and then you could click on that, and then you might read somebody's post, and then that has a link to an article, then you can find yourself reading the article, and then the email pops up, and then you hit the email, and then now you're reading the email, but then inside the email, there's a link, so now, it's so many different things, or you could be on YouTube watching videos after videos, but then the next video look just interesting as the video you're watching now, so then now you're watching that video, so... It could be you could be distracted in so many different ways that you'll look up at the end of the day and then you won't be you have you haven't made any progress on your goals. You know, so you have to be able to manage these things. So that's why this the social media is a weapon of mass distraction. Not in not even just social media, internet. It's good, but we can't but we also have to be able to manage it. Because really at the end of the day, you can't blame you know, you can't blame somebody who's obese, right? Somebody who's obese. So a person who's obese can't blame the food, the, the, the fact that the, the, that the food is fattening for the reason of them being fat. It's not, it's not the fact that the food is there. It's the fact that they are, they're, they're not managing their consumption of that food, if that makes sense. So I, I want you to think about the, I want you to think about the internet and social media and technology the same way you know it's not the fact that technology and social media is there that is the problem it's, it's it's your consumption of it and i hope that makes sense it's your consumption of it not the fact that it's there because these things are great tools they're meant to help us be more productive but it also has a reverse effect because now it's so many other things that's that's so new and shiny and you know and and our brains have our brains are 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 novelty seeking. That means that we we love things that's new, you know, things that's, that we haven't seen, things that look interesting. We like, ooh, ah, you know, you know how we talked about, you know, the different brains early, and you know, we talked about how you have the monkey brain, and your brain is just, it, it's just, you see something like, oh, this this look good, this looks interesting. Oh, that food looks good. Oh, let me look up this online, and let me see what 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 what, what the what the reviews are on this. Let me see what these shoes are like. Let me see. So it can be so many different things. So that's why it's called a weapon of mass destruction. Distraction, but it's just all about managing it. So, how do you manage it? Well, first, I want you to start. Turn, I want you to turn off all notifications on your phone. I know this is gonna be hard. I know I'm gonna get some pushback, but Terrell, how am I gonna know who comments on my posts? But Terrell, how am I gonna know when the email comes? It might be a very important email. I know. I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there that's gonna say that, you know, and um, and I understand. And this could be hard, but like I said, I didn't make this stuff up. I don't want you to think that I, this is the stuff. This, these are things. These are things that I've that I've learned from the world's best at this. The high, the world's highest achievers. These, the, I'm telling you, this is what they're doing. I'm talking about the, the the Richard Bransons. I'm talking about the you know the. I'm talking about billionaires. I'm talking about Tony Robbins. I'm talking about these are what all these guys and and, and women are doing, and um. They're not letting themselves be distracted every time somebody feels like sending them a message. Every time, every time that that little blue icon or the little red icon pops up on your on your phone on your app. Every time somebody you know 
um, you know, calls them or contacts them. Now, there could be certain times, let's say if you're getting calls, emails, whatever, there could be certain times where you could say, okay, well, I'm open, you know, to being contacted. But, you know, especially notifications, you want to make sure that you're not being distracted all day. Because there's a book called, um, there's a book called Flow. And um, I can't remember who the, I can't remember who the author is right now, but just look up this book called Flow. And the whole the whole premise of the book is that every time if you really want to get into a flow state and you really want to be as creative as you want to be and do the best work that you can, you have to get in a flow state in order to get into a flow state. You have to be focused on your work for a certain amount of time, right? And you have to have a certain level of concentration. Like, have you ever been in a place where you've been, you know, you've been working on a project, but then you notice maybe like 10, 15, 20 minutes, like you was really into it, you know, no matter what you were doing, maybe you was writing something or maybe you was, you know, playing a sport or maybe you was working out, but you, you was really into, you know, sort of like the flow. You had a good, you, know, you had a good rhythm going, right? And um, or you felt like you was more creative. So that is that flow state. But every time you get interrupted by a phone call, by a text message, by, by, by you know, some, a, a, a social media icon or something, ding, something pops up on your phone, right? Email, whatever the case. Every time you get distracted by that, it takes you out of your flow state. And then you have to start again. And, it's the, and the research on it is every time you get out of a flow state, or get distracted. Listen to this. It takes you t on average 26 minutes to get back into your flow state. Even even if you didn't even if your phone was vibrating and you didn't answer it. The fact that it took you out of that flow state is it on average it takes you back 26 minutes to get back in that state. So it's really important that if you're working on a project that that you stay focused and um, and that and that brings me to to the next section that says focus on block times. And every time that you have a block time, that's the time that you completely are focused on whatever your task is at hand. So throughout the day, typically what I try to do is I try to have um, at least three block times of whatever my my goal is, right? Whatever my whatever my project that I'm working on. I try to have certain block times and I try to make my block times 50 minutes, but sometimes depending on what I'm working on, it might not be 50 minutes. Sometimes it might be 30 minutes. Depending on what I'm working on, it might be 90 minutes, but typically, usually it's about 50 minutes if I'm working on something that I'll say, okay, this is my block time, 50 minutes. So usually what I'll do is, you know, I'll put my phone on silent for that 50 minutes because really at the end of the day, like a lot of people are worried, concerned, what if it's an emergency? What if my mom calls or, you know, what if, you know, my boyfriend or my girlfriend calls and it's important or it's an emergency? Well, you know, it's, it, it sounds mean, but if it's really an emergency, they should probably be calling 911 and not you, to be honest. So usually it's 50 minutes. Um... And um, you wanna you wanna make sure that um, you know that that you're staying focused on that time and you know and if it is a, a real you know if it, if it is a, a situation or something that you have to let somebody know ahead of time I'm gonna let, I'm a I'm a, I'm gonna talk about that in the next point but what I really want you to know for this one is it's about having a focused time so you know so for the morning let's say I have before I go to work right one of the things I do is I have a black time to you know to just to do something called priming and this is what this is this these these this is really what all the gurus do it's called priming and priming in the morning is really preparing your mind and preparing your body to go into the day so that means that you know for some people that might mean meditation for others that might mean you know uh working out for a certain amount of time in the morning for other people that might mean you want to read um read a couple pages of a of a of a good book of a positive book to sort of to sort of set the 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 mindset to set your mindset for the day so when you go into the day you you you're approaching it from you know a, a more uh you know a progressive mindset or you know that might mean for you typically one of the things i do is I'll get up and I'll drink. I'll drink about a half liter of water in the morning because as we go in, when we go to sleep, we're dehydrated going throughout all of these all of these years, right? So um, all of these um, hours. So when you wake up, you want to drink at least a half liter of water. Um, right now, I'm trying to do. They say it's good to drink four to six liters of water a day. So that means I drink. 
I try my best to drink a whole liter of water before I go to work. You might be thinking, oh, well, you got to use the bathroom all the time. How you can do that? Well, that's the price to pay. But would you rather have to use the bathroom every hour, two hours in order to have more energy throughout the day and accomplish your goals? Right. What's the trade off? You know, when it's good, you know, the more you get up, you know, the the, the, the more your, your body gets to stretch and your back gets to stretch. So your body will thank you for having to get up and move, right? Instead of sitting down in a chair all day. So it's important to um to make sure that you have these focused block times. But for me, typically what my block times throughout throughout the day look like this, because I know there's gonna be a lot of entrepreneurs who are um you know who who, who are watching this or go through this program and this might even be you to where you know you're working part time but then you're also looking to accomplish your goals your projects or or you know or to you know to be a, a, a um to to run your business part time and you may be looking to eventually go full time your business right you make you generate enough income and do certain things of that nature right so typically so this this is this is um and Gary V talks a lot about this too. Uh, but typically what I what I do in the morning is, you know, I'll usually wake up um, and, um, you know, either um, shower, I'll drink, depending on sometimes I take a shower the night before, sometime in the morning, depending on if I'm working out. Um, but I definitely drink. I will drink a half liter of I drink a half liter of water as um, soon as I wake up to sort of get my body, um, my body right. Then I'll do um what what Tony Robbins calls incantations and incantations is basically you you really basically just talking to yourself and you doing like positive affirmations and um the good thing about that is it helps my frame your mindset helps frame your mind in order to um in order to you know go throughout the day you know so. Um, you, but you, it's a ton of stuff on this. You can find it online. That's not what this point is about. But I, I'm just letting you know, sort of what I, some of the things that I do in a day. Then I'll write down, um, I'll write down the things that I have to do in a day. Um, in an earlier video, um, we we talked about we talked about the daily impact planner, right? So I go through my impact planner. Um, what at, what are my projects? What I have to do? Um, you know, what could distract me? Um, throughout the day, um, a lot sometimes is you know social media, whatever the case is. I usually base what I'm gonna get distracted off on, I, for the day. What I could get distracted on for the day, based on what I got distracted on yesterday. So you know, it could have been an email, could have been people you know stop by you know my my cubicle at work. It could have been anything. But then I'll say, okay, today I know this is what distracted me yesterday. So today, and I'm filling out this impact plan every day, right? So you want to do that? Okay, what can distract me today? And then make sure that you focused on not get, hitting those distractions that day. So, um, and then I have a block time for lunch that I usually knock out some work. And then when I get home during the evening, then I, I usually have at least you know at least two to three other block times where where I'm, I'm cranking out other things. It might be a webinar, it might be um, you know it might be a presentation, I might be you know doing an interview, I might be conducting an interview, I might be whatever the case is, right? I might be doing some research, but it, it's about having specific focus block times to accomplish um, whatever your project is and to make it go forward faster okay um, and then the last one is manage others expectations so um, so this goes to this goes to the point where you know you might be asking well you know I, you know I have other people in my life right now that I can't you know I can't I, they, I always have to be available to them or you know I have or right now I'm trying to build the business and I have so many people, you know, commenting and reaching out to me. And what are they going to think if I don't just immediately reply to them, you know, as soon as they send it off or, or a reasonable amount of time? And um, and um, I'm going to say something you might you might not like, but um, but it, but it's the absolute truth. And the truth is that, you know, you've trained people to do that. That means that if people feel like. If people are always going to try to, and it might not necessarily be negative, so don't take it as a negative thing. But if if people are always going to try to, you know, see um, how far they can go with you or how much they, how much leniency you're going to give them, and this is not even just your business. This could be like this could be your kids. This could be your wife, your husband. This could be you know boyfriend, girlfriend. This could be your your customers, your clients. Um, but these are, but the but so they're always gonna have you know they usually have their agenda in mind, right? You know things that's important to them, and you really have to manage their expectations and sort of train people and let them know that 
um, you know, that there's certain times that you have to do certain things and that, you know, you'll you'll get to them, you know, after that. You know, I get unless it's really like a complete emergency and they need you right at that moment, you know, then, you know, then that, that's I, I would consider that an exception. But if we're looking at a calendar 30 days throughout the month and you're continuously being interrupted and distracted by other people 25 out of the 30 days in a month, then, you know, at, at that point in time, that's that's just way too much. You'll never get to your goals and 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 accomplish what you want to accomplish being distracted by other people that much so managing other expectations is is letting other people know what you have to do in the time you have to do it and when you'll get back to them so because if you notice if you ever try to reach out to an influencer if you ever try to reach out to 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 um you know to, to anybody who's who's making any kind of you know, uh, a guru or a millionaire, whoever, you know that you can't just get in contact with them. You ever thought about that? You, you can never really just get in contact with them. You always have to go through an assistant. Um, and sometimes the assistant is, their their whole job is to filter out who what who is important or what is important to whoever that person is, right? So you can never just get in contact with them. And even if you do have like their direct email, direct phone number, even if you do have their social media and you reach out to them, if they ever if they reach out to you, nine times out of ten, it's probably like a couple of days later, probably like a day later. They probably have an assistant or somebody reach back out to you. It, you can ne- and basically what I'm saying is you can never just interrupt them. You can never just interrupt them on in what they're doing. So, you know, once I really notice this is like, okay, if it's anybody who's really important, manage their expectations. You know, like so right now. Um, you know, I have, you know, my fiance, she, um, you know, she, she sees that I'm here, you know, I'm being, I'm being an entrepreneur and, you know, helping others, making a difference. And, you know, I spend all my time like outside of work, making sure that I can help bless others, help others be more, be more productive. So I'm doing everything, you know, webinars and, and, um, you know, speaking and, you know, so you follow my social media, you see a lot of stuff, but as I, but sometimes I have to let her. I have to let her know that, you know, during this time, you know, from seven to eight o'clock, let's say, for example, you know, I, I have to create this webinar because I have a I have a presentation or I have to write this speech. So, you know, and uh, it's really about it's, it's so much easier if you tell people that's important to you ahead of time or it might be your kids. You might say, you know, hey, you know, ask mommy. Um, you know, you know, uh, ask mommy for, you know, for anything that you need, you know, between, you know, this time. OK. You, all right. Well, daddy is, you know, daddy has to work on this project. So, um, you know, so so if you need you need to eat or if you're hungry, if you want to play, you know, ask mommy, I'll come out there and play with you afterwards. So it's really about managing the expectations of others around you so you can still, you know, get what you need to get done. You know, if it's a business. Um, and, um, you know, you have customers and clients, you know, it's they people don't, people don't need, um, people don't need you to respond to them immediately. It's okay if you respond to them an hour later, two hours later, you know, a few hours later. So it's, it's okay if you're doing that, you know, cause right now things are moving so fast and trust me, if it's, if it's a lot, it's probably more big, it's probably bigger in your mind. Uh, for pretty much for a fact, I know that is bigger in your mind than it is to the people who are following you. So, um, you know, so j- if you can manage other expectations and you notice that you'll be able to uh, stay focused a lot better because you're removing those distractions from other people, removing those distractions from from notifications to social media and you're staying focused. All right. Break. Break, 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 and that is destroying distraction. So, um, hopefully, I answered uh, your question. Uh, patience within that. Um, if, if you have any additional questions on that, then you know I, I can I can definitely answer them. Um, no, that was diminished my question um, <laughs> one of your statements and that's fine too yeah. um, but thank you <laughs> alright <laughs> right, you, you know this is what they're doing sometimes it's hard you know it can be hard you know because we feel because as humans we feel like we need to help everybody you know we feel like people 
are, are are not grown and they can't help themselves. But we well, we forget that they are grown and they can't help themselves. Let me put it to you that way. But if people are so um, if, if if we just every time somebody stops you and ends, and ask you a question and you know you'll never get anything done. You know people have to sometimes you have to teach people how to be self sufficient. You know even like even like even at my job like my boss like sometimes we might have coworkers who continuously goes up to him and you know they ask him for certain things and he and he says okay well did you look on the drive did you do this do that did did you you know did you check with this person first and so pretty much he's just trying to help you um you know he he's just trying to help people just be more um uh, be more self sufficient and that's what you got to help other people do too i know it's hard hold on Yes, Tashana, we're on break. She could come back. So, you know, I know it can be hard, but people can do it. You know, we got to give people, um, we got to give people the credit that, that, they, that they can do it themselves. And a lot of times, if you can't even get, you know, if you can't help somebody at a particular point in time or whatever the case is, they'll find somebody else or they'll find another way, you know, because really, really, to be honest, if every time somebody reached out to you or needed, or needed your help and you helped them, Especially if it's the same person, you could be more of a crutch than them than a, than than a helping hand. You know, it's the it's the it's the you know it's the age old story. You can give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, or you can teach a man a fish and feed him for a lifetime. You know, I mean, we've been we've been we've been hearing that story forever, right? So it's really about knowing that people are not gonna die if if you can help them. Okay, so I don't want to interrupt, but. You cross-reference, you know, the important people with assistance. You know what I'm saying? We mm -hmm. don't have assistance. So how do we, who, do we, like, allow our phones to be our assistance and just let it hoard everything until we have time to tend to it? Is that what, like, because... Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, that's because what it's for. a professional person can take the time to, you know, their, like you said, their assistant filters through everything for them. So the priorities get pushed to the top. Whereas, you know, with common folk like us, once we block time out, once I sit down and go and look at these 50 to 90, you know, notifications I got going on, then that becomes... A job in itself, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, so, so that's a great question, and um, and that and that's the best way to do it, you know. Oh, can you, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, um, but that's actually the that's that's the best way to do it. Um, especially once you're starting off, because I mean, I, I don't have an assistant, right? And I know many entrepreneurs who, um, and even speakers who are further in their career, and um, and they still don't have assistants, right? So. You know, so it's just about it's just about making sure that whatever's a priority remains a priority, right? And all the other things that you need to get done, those are scheduled during certain times. So right now, yes, we don't have assistance, but we have to schedule time, schedule your time for email. Don't check email. And this was a hard thing for me to do, like not check my email every hour, because every hour I'll be checking my email. Like I got something, some somebody's gonna send me something so important that I have to check it and respond within this hour. And um, I'm noticing that, you know, small small holes link the sink, sink the ship, and that would take out a lot of time. So it's about setting specific time. So you might say, all right, well, I'm gonna check my social media, you know, four times a day. You know, I'll check it in the morning. From this to this time and respond to people, I'll check it during the afternoon, I'll check it in the evening, and I'll check it at night, right? So you'll have certain times throughout the day where you where you, where you check and you'll respond to people instead of just continuously checking it every 20, 30 minutes, every hour, every time you stand on the line, every time you walk in somewhere, you check it, you check it, you check it, you check it. That eats, that eats up a lot of time. Have specific designated times that you check things and you'll be able to do it. And then when, once you check it, don't play with it. Get in. If you check an email, get in and respond to everybody you need to respond to, then get out. If you in, you know, social media, get in there, you know, respond to who you were to respond, put your post up, who you're gonna put your post up to, and then get out. You know, so it's um it, it's definitely hard, you know, especially today is definitely hard to, you know, it can be hard to do that. I'm not anything that I'm saying, I'm not pretending like any of this stuff is easy, by the way. So any all the stuff I'm saying, like I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy. I'm just telling you, 
I'm just telling you what the world's greatest do and how they and how they at the top of their field. You know, the world's best, you know, fashion designers, best companies, the world's best, you know, entrepreneurs, like athletes, actors. I'm I'm telling you how they do it. And this is what they're doing. They're not checking this stuff all day. They have they have specific times that they check. I remember watching in um and Antoine, you could probably attest to this if you watch a lot of Gary V episodes. I remember um a recent episode too where Gary V said Gary Vaynerchuk, he said that um you know, I I had I, I I'm finally getting around to checking my email. He said by the time I go in and check my email, I have I, I'm I'm about I'm gonna have about 500 emails that I need to check. Do you remember? I don't know if you remember seeing that, Antoine. You re- remember that, right? He said I'm gonna have about 500 emails to check and have to go through and respond to. He said I'm probably gonna spend like a half day just responding to all these emails. He's not doing that because he's checking his email every hour. Right, he's not getting that in an hour. He probably hasn't checked his email all week, and now he's going to check his email. So it's the same thing, you know. You got to have designated times to do things and stop just letting it be so random because you don't even realize how much time. Like as as I'm even saying this and going through this myself, it's like I'm really noticing how much more time that I have, how much more creative that I that I am, how much more I'm I'm accomplishing. So it's it's really is mind blowing. Okay. All right. So let's get into. I think we have uh, maybe two to three more sections. So um, we're already at four o'clock. So I'm gonna breeze through breeze through these because we talked about a lot of the big chunks already. Um, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this next section. <clears throat> All right. Putting it into procrastination in this video, we're gonna really talk about procrastination, and a lot of people think that there's a there's a hundred different reasons why they're procrastinating and they can't get things done and why they can't do this and why they can't do that. But in this video, I'm really just gonna I'm just, there's only really two things that you really need to know in order to overcome procrastination to really put it into it and to start making progress every day. There's not really that many things you need to do. Contrary to popular belief, so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video, right? So, putting an end to procrastination, right? What what's what's the big deal? What's the big hoorah, right? So, if you think of when when you think about procrastination, what do you really think about? You know, you're thinking about you know you being lazy, you know, you're thinking about not wanting to do anything, and um, you know, I. Well, I think what wrote, most people really look at themselves as, you know, a procrastinator. I would say a majority of people probably look at themselves like, ah, I know I need to do this and I'm not doing it. Why am I not doing it? And really, there's a difference between being, uh, it's this, there's a difference between procrastination and being a procrastinator. There's a difference. Everybody procrastinates. Everybody. Even the world's best procrastinate, right? Now, they just happen to be productive in the area of life that they want to be achiever, that they want to be an achiever, and they just happen to be a a uh, they happen to be you know a high achiever in in those areas. But if you look in other areas of their life, they're pretty much a procrastinator. You could you can find somebody who's doing the best in business, best you know entrepreneur, best company. But if you look in other areas of their life, right, you might look and they look at their health. Yeah, they look like they're procrastinating in their health, right? That's pretty obvious, right? Or you know, you might they they might be procrastinating when it comes to spending time with their family or spending time with their kids, right? So they're not really doing what they can to make progress and be productive in that area. It might be spiritually, right? So everybody procrastinates. There's there's nobody who's perfect in every single area, but you know the goal is as you go throughout your life. You just want to, you know, you just want to make sure that you keep an eye on each and every plate that's spinning in your life in order to do better. So, so that's a good thing, right? We know everybody procrastinates now, but as far as ending it and being and being uh, uh, ambitious in the areas that you wanna that you wanna increase or make better, there's just a few things that you need to do. Really, there's only two core things. It's not a million things I need to tell you, which is a good thing. So if you get these two things, you're gonna be you're gonna find yourself putting it into to your procrastination. And one is habits and routines. Habits and routines. What I've noticed 
is that and, and this is everybody and I want you to I want you to have from now on I want you to have like these these antennas. Every time you listen into an interview, every time you 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 you're, you're watching a, a motivational video, something that's inspirational, right? From I don't care from any speaker, from anybody, right? I want you to listen, especially when they talk about what they do throughout the day or they talk about the things that they're accomplishing. Because I want you to listen and hear for habits and routines. Because habits and routines, to really be honest, this is the core concept of productivity. Habits and routines. When you want to get things done, this is this is this is your savior. This is what's gonna get you there. This is like the golden goose. Because what most people do is most people are can get things done. But the thing is, they're not consistent and they don't have any habits or routines that they're consistently doing that's going to help them get towards their goal. It's easy to do something onesie, twosie, all right, today I feel like writing a book, T- tomorrow I don't, today I feel like calling on prospects, you know, to, um, you know, tomorrow I may not feel like it, today, you know, I feel like, you know, working towards, you know, this business, I feel like, you know, I feel like doing some, taking some clients, I feel like making some sales, tomorrow you may not, and then all this flip floppy every now and then, you're never going to be able to get momentum towards your goals but if you but if you have a set habit in a routine then then you know then you're moving like a machine right you a lot of it is even subconscious right so let me tell you what the difference between a habit and a routine is because you might be wondering okay what's the ha- difference a habit is something that you do continuously right but it doesn't but it it, it doesn't even have to be conscious Usually it's unconscious, so it's 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 an unconscious behavior that you do, um, that that you just continuously do, right? So it's basically an unconscious behavior. When you're looking at a routine, a routine is basically a set of habits, but that's more conscious, right? So if you so let me put it to you this way: if you want to change a habit, you got to change your routine. Do you get what I'm saying? If it's anything that you want to change, if you, like you can say, all right, every time I have, um, every time I walk into a donut shop, every time I walk into Dunkin' Donuts to get a coffee, I have a habit of buying a donut. But your although your routine is what your routine is to go to that shop. But if you change your routine and you go to another store, let's say you, you decide to you want to go to. You know, um, I don't know where they sell coffee. Probably Seven Eleven is probably a bad example because they have donuts too. But you get what I'm saying. If you decide to go to another shop that that doesn't have donuts, you change your routine now. Oh, now your habits could change because now you don't have. You, now you're not being tempted. You know, because this is quote that I love, and the quote says, "You know, it's better to." It's, it's always better to avoid temptation than it is to resist it. It's better to avoid temptation than to resist it. So don't even put yourself in that predicament or put that or, or put yourself in that situation. So if you don't want to procrastinate, then make sure that you you have a set of habits and routines that's gonna that that's not that's basically not gonna give you a choice in order to procrastinate, right? That's not gonna give you a choice in order to you know, in order to, you know, to get distracted. So like your habit could be, so I could put, let me give you an example for myself. So for me, you know, um, I can have a habit of sometimes when I go on social media, you know, to either reply to comments or I might put up a post. I have a habit of every time I go on social media, you know, I, I end up looking through social media, right? I end up looking through posts, I end up liking, I end up commenting, you know, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that, but not when, I'm not when I have a goal to do something within a certain amount of time. If I say I'm gonna spend 20, 30 minutes on social media doing X, Y, Z, but then I end up doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, right? Plus X, Y, Z. Now, or maybe I don't even get to the to the Y and the Z. I just do X, and then I just went off on a whole tangent and just end up doing everything else. So, you know. So now that I know, all right, I know my habit is to. It's to browse social media when I go in and I'm supposed to be doing business. I'm supposed to be doing something. Well, all right. Well, then maybe let me change up my routine a little bit. You know, maybe, you know, maybe it's maybe instead of me just, you know, going direct, you know, looking through my timeline 
for somebody or maybe, you know, maybe what I'll do is I'll type in the person's name who I'm looking for. And then as soon as I'm done, I'll exit the application or maybe, you know, uh, maybe I'll turn off my notifications because I, I have a habit of every time I get a notification. Right. Let's say, for example, every time I get a notification, um, I have a habit of going or stopping whatever I'm doing and just going on social media. Right. So. Let me change. Let me change my routine. And let me say, all right. Let me turn off my notifications. Or I have a habit of every time I walk, I walk through the kitchen in my house, I end up looking in the fridge. Okay, well, let me change my routine. All right, let me just stop walking through the kitchen if I don't have to stop walking through the kitchen, right? And I say, if you had a health goal, so it's about changing your routine. So the more you have a habit and the more you have a routine for what you do, the easier it's going to be for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Because I want you to remember the three brains that we have, right? And this is, you know, um, I love the way um, my 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 um, my my guy Darren Hardy said it. Who who was who was the um, chief uh, uh, editor of Success Magazine? He said that you have the three brains, and you have the robot brain, the monkey brain, and you have the sage brain. Remember, the robotic brain is the is the brain that you want to pass over all your habits and routines to because they're just gonna do it. You know that they, your, the robot brain of yourself they don't care about your little goals and your little dreams. It, all that cares about is reproduction. All it cares about is keeping you uh, uh, alive, and you know and and you know and that's pretty much it. They don't want to work hard. No one doesn't want to do anything. But if you have a, a positive habit and a routine. Then a robot brain gets it and does it automatically. And then your monkey brain, of course, is the brain that gets distracted the most. And your sage brain is the reason why you're even you're even going through this course right now because you want more. You have dreams. You have goals. You have ambition. You want to make a difference in the world. So that's what that is. So habits and routines is the best thing. Is one of the best things that you could do. And then the next thing is find a strong motivator, and not necessarily a person, but a motivator within yourself. You know, you hear if you follow Eric Thomas or you follow some of the gurus, you might hear that they say you got to have a why. And your why is what's going to help you get up in the morning. Your why is what's going to help you roll out of bed, right? Your why is what's going to help is going to help pull, you know, pull you through, you know, so if you if you want to have a legacy, you know, if you have if you have children right now and you know that, you know, you're being a role model to your children and you know you want to have a better life you want to give a better life to your children than what you had growing up or, the, or, or, or what you're going through right now, then that could be a motivator for you to to make those calls when you don't feel like making it. It could be a strong motivator for you to, you know, uh, 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 get out of bed or, or, or make that presentation or, you know, or, or pitch that business or get on the treadmill, go out and run, whatever the case is, you got to find, you, your, 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 have your, 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 your story has to you have to have a stronger story for why you want to do something that's stronger than the reason why you don't want to do it. Let me say that again. Your story, your your story to, for you to be motivated for why you want to do something has to be stronger than the story for why you don't want to do it. Right? So that means that if you're tired in your bed and you don't feel like getting up in the morning to go to work or to, to grind or do whatever. Well, you got to think about, okay, well, what's more important right now? Is it me getting sleep or is it me for providing provide for my kids? You know, what's more important right now? Is it is it is it me eating these bag of Doritos or is it me getting getting healthy so I could look good, you know, feel good so so my so my kids and my parents, you know, could could really see that uh, you know, that, that I'm healthy and I'm making a difference in, in my life, you know, and in the lives of others. So it's like, you got to find, you got to find something that's a stronger motivator that's going to help you. That's going to help you overcome procrastination. And really just doing these two things are really this, this right here. These two things is the price of this entire program. The, the your investment in price in the entire program, this one slide right here, if you really understand it and really get it and really implement this in your life this could be the whole entire course of the program because once you start implementing habits and routines you're going to start making progress once you know how to get yourself to do the things that you don't want to do because the biggest because the biggest hurdle with anything is that when you make a commitment you feel like doing it at that point in time when you don't feel like doing it that's when the problem comes in you have to make sure you have to 
understand and stay motivated during those times when you don't feel like doing it because those are the biggest hindrances to your success. All right. Break. Break, break, break. Anybody has any questions about putting it into procrastination? So just those two things, you know, so just make sure you have you have certain habits and routines. If you're looking for specific habits and routines, there's a you know, there's a ton of information out there that you can do, but generally is making sure that you know what times you want to do things. And then also it's about um, you know, it's about making sure you're doing the right things and you know what motivates you. So part of it is you really have to know yourself. Like, what's really going to get you motivated? Like, do you have kids right now? Do you want to have a legacy? Do you, you know, you know, do do you not regret? Like, one of the like one of my motivators is I never want to live with regret. You know, I know I know old people. I know that like there's a lot of older people who say that they live with a lot of regret because they wish they could have done certain things throughout their life and they didn't do it. So for me, when I'm when I leave this earth, I want to know that I gave it everything that I got while I was on here. Everything I helped as many people as I I could help. I you know I I was able to I didn't leave nothing off the table. You know I was able to travel, do the things that I want in life. Like I want to make sure I leave this world with no regrets. Not oh I wonder what could, what I could have been had I just tried a little bit harder. I wonder what could have happened for me. So, but you got to find out what's what's the motivation for you. Okay, all right. So we have about two more. These last two will be quick, 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 quick because we already over the time about eighteen minutes. So I'm gonna make these last two very quick. But is there any questions um, about putting it into procrastination? If not, we're gonna keep on rolling the river. All right, we good. Thumbs up. All right, all right. Let's move on. <clears throat> How to destroy self doubt and negative thoughts? So this is a great video. This video, we're really going to talk, we're really just going to overview the one major thing that you need to do to destroy the self-doubt and negative thoughts within yourself. Everybody has this, and but it's about how long do you allow negative, negative thoughts and self-doubt to consume you, and do you let it hold you back? And there's really one major key that if you understand this key, it might not necessarily be the only thing, but this is a huge piece of it. To where if you understand this, then you will have, then you'll start noticing yourself being more courageous. You start noticing yourself being able to do do things more and be more progressive and make more progress, right? Because we all know that once you start getting into that self-doubt, I don't know if I can do it, this is not for me, um, I don't know if I can make it, that can really hinder you. So let's um so let's jump into the video. And uh, jump into the next slide, so you can um, so you can see. So this is so this <laughs> so the left side could be um, you know all the negative things that you think about yourself, right? And the right side can be more of the positive things. So you know, confused, helpless, ashamed, right? These are all the things that if you're feeling these things, it's not going to want to make you make progress. It's not going to want to help. It's not going to you're not going to feel like working on your goals, right? And what I've really noticed that that you, in order for you to make progress, you can't continuously keep talking down to yourself, talking bad to yourself. You can't continuously keep saying things that's going to hurt you. At the end of the day, you got to do things that's going to be able to that that's going to be able to help uh, build your courage so you can make progress. So. Um, so if you know about um, Anthony Robbins, right? And I listen, you know, a lot to Anthony and Tony Robbins throughout the years. You know, he said that if you want to change the way that you feel, right? He said that there's there's a few things that you can do because at the end of the day, right? If you talk in negative to yourself and you have negative self thoughts and and doubts and things of that nature, then obviously you're not gonna feel like doing it. So he said that if you want to make progress. And you want to change how you feel. There's three things that you need to do. He said, one, that you need to make sure that you change your physiology. So your physiology is is your actual your actual body, right? That means that if you ever notice somebody who's sad, right? Don't they face look kind of down? They face look make look kind of droopy. Their head might be down. Like you can always notice a person. You could go across the world. 
And you can look at anybody from any religion, any culture, any country, and if you and if you translated to them in their language and said, "All right, I want you to be sad and depressed." I can guarantee you 100% of the time you would know that that you would you would be you could have 100 you could have 100 people from a different 100 different personality uh, um cultures and personalities and everything um uh, 100 different cultures have them sit in a room next to each other and if you tell everybody to be sad not would not showing them what sad looks like and they don't even have to speak the same language but if you tell everybody to be sad you see everybody with the same face Everybody with the same emotions, everybody with the same body language. Like it's really fascinating. So you know, so that was the first thing Tony Robbins said. If you want to change how you feel, you have to change your physiology. So that means you know, so that means stand up, show head up, shoulders back, because you can't physically feel sad when when you're not sitting or standing or posturing in a certain way. You have to do that in order to feel sad. He also said number two. Is you want to make sure that you are that that you focus on certain things. That means you want to focus on positive. So that means instead of instead of um, uh, uh, focusing on you know why this isn't working, man, this is bad, this is messed up. Instead of focusing on that, ask yourself positive questions to focus on better things. You know, if somebody if somebody and this is everything. Like if somebody passes away in your family, you could say, oh, um, you know. Uh, you know, I'm so I'm so upset. You know, why does that have to happen to me? Why does that a third? But instead, you can say, okay, well, you can ask yourself different questions. Okay, what has this person contributed to the world? You know, I, I remember. You know, what are the good times that that we had together? What are the what are, what are the what are the times where you know this person expressed you know the the best emotion, brought the best out of people? So this so it's all about focus and what you ask yourself um, as far as questions go. And then, um, and then really, um, what he said, he said is physiology, focus, and um, physiology, focus, and uh, and I can't even remember the last one. It's crazy because I because because I I love those three. I love the three frameworks, but you know, but even just doing those two things are are really going to make a big difference. So you know, so that's you know, so. That's from you know what really Tony Robbins said as far as okay this is what you need to do for self doubt, but one of the other things that I've also noticed too about destroying self doubt and negative thoughts is really that it's all, it really all comes down to this one word. It all comes down to confidence, and it's about the confidence that you really have in yourself, and it's about having the confidence to go out because think think about this: the more you talk bad and negative about yourself, the more you think about the things that won't happen, the more that you say, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm ready. Um, I think this process is going to be too hard. Can I do it? What if I put in all of this work and then at the end, it doesn't come out the way I expected it to? What if I go out and talk to people and they reject me? You know, what if, what if I, you know, what if I try to do this and it doesn't come out the way that I, I wanted it to come out, you know? So it's so many negative things that we could think about. And um, with all of those negative thoughts, that's killing our progress. That's killing our productivity because it's making you scared and fearful to want to make progress. So that if, if so, you need to really flip it on its head and have confidence. So then the natural next question is, okay, well, Tarot, what do you got to do to have confidence? Well, in order to have confidence, um, there's something that I learned from. There's a nice little um, formula that I learned from um, Brendan Burchard, and um, what he said that there is there's something called the confidence competence loop. The confidence competence loop. Okay, and what the confidence confidence loop is, it is every time you have, if you want to get more confidence. You have to get more competent in what you're doing. So if you're fearful that you know that you're gonna get rejected, let's say if you're you know if you gotta try to approach somebody you know to tell them about your business or what you got going on, or you know if you're fearful about you know losing weight or whatever the case is, or so whatever whatever that is. Well, if you're fearful, then you're not obviously you have left confidence, right? But it's but really what it is is because you haven't you you haven't you don't have enough competence yet in order to handle go through that situation. So you got to find figure out okay what do I have to do I have to learn more I have to practice more because you'll get more confident. Like I remember 
like one of like my favorite player in the world is Kobe Bryant. And I remember watching a video. Uh, I remember watching an interview from him. And Kobe in, in, in the interview was saying, Kobe, you always take the last shot. You know, how do you have so much confidence in 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 when it's those final seconds of the game and you and, and all the pressure's on you when the game is on you? How do you do that? And what he said is, do you, anytime you see me taking a shot on the court during those last moments of the game, it's because I practiced that shot. Over and over and over and over. He said, I practiced that shot physically in the gym and mentally hundreds of times. And that's why he has the confidence because he has the confidence. He he practiced it. He did it over and over and over again. So now when he goes out on the court and he has the he has to actually perform in front of 50,000 fans, he can go out there and he can win games. So it's the same thing. If you're not if you're talking to yourself negative and you don't feel good and you have negative thoughts, it's because you haven't practiced enough. It's because you need to learn more. It's because you need to go out and you need to try more. You know, and if you fail, learn from it. It's okay. It's all right. Everybody fails. So, you know, so that's the main key to this in about in, in having confidence and overcoming self overcoming self-doubt, negative thoughts is because you have that confidence. In order to get the confidence, get competence in order to do it. That's the same thing um, about, you know, when I really first started speaking, I actually really within the past two weeks, I've had maybe about three to four people ask me, hey, how do you have so much confidence to go out and speak? Well, that's because I've been speaking a lot. You know, I, I, I do courses like this and I go out and speak to schools and I'm doing Facebook lives and I'm doing, you know, uh, you know, uh, Instagram stories and I'm doing, all, you know, Snapchat and everything. Right. So that's how because the more that I talk, the more confidence that I get. And it's going to be the same thing for you in whatever journey that you're taking as well. All right. Break. Break, 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 break. So hopefully that wasn't too long, but um, hopefully, hopefully you got the, uh, the 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 idea and the gist behind that. And um, you know, this was this was a really uh, popular topic, and because um, I know a lot of people wanted to know how do I overcome those thoughts, and um, that's really what it is. You know, that's that, and that's really what my research has has come to find is you know just practice more, you have more confidence. So does anybody have any questions on that? Is that pretty much straightforward? Yes, thumbs up. Good, good, good. All right, you good, patience. You good, Antoine. You all right? Y'all good. All right. So let's go into um, let's go into the last one. All right, we're gonna go into the last section, and this one to be uh, super quick. <clears throat> all right, we are in the last video of the course, overcoming life challenges. Man, if you made it to this video, that means you have you're, you're really serious about your journey. That means just serious about you really making some changes in your life, and um, you know, and I commend you for that. A lot of people that does, does, does won't take the time out to make it this far, so I commend you on that. And um, in this last section, um, we're really just going to talk about overcoming some life challenges, and you know, really just I'm gonna make this brief. But I just want you to just sort of I want I want to end this program with you just saying that, you know, we all have life challenges and in order to overcome these things, there's just um, just just a certain mindset that you want to have. So it might not necessarily be, you know, a specific tactical tool that you can use, but really just sort of approaching life with an overall mindset. And that's what that's really what this this last video is, is. What's the mindset you have that you have to have going throughout life and making sure that you that you stay um, productive each and every day? So I wanted to start. Um, I wanted to talk about um, Rocky. And um, if you know about Rocky, then you know if you saw the movie, then then you might remember this part. And there's one part throughout the movie that he said he said this very important. He said it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. And that's how I look at life. You know, a lot of people just think about, you know, as you go through life, that it's just going to be all peaches and roses. Like you're just going to go through, you're going to start a new journey, you're going to start a new business, you're going to start a new health plan, you're going to start, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to 
start, you're going to get kids, you know, you're going to start having kids, you're going to, you know, start going to school, you're going to start this new job and you're going to go through it and it's not going to be any difficult, it's not going to be any difficulties and obstacles. And what I've learned that, that you have to anticipate these things. You have to anticipate when it comes to overcoming life's challenges, you have to be able to anticipate what's going to happen to you. And you can't always guess it. It's not always going to be right. But you have to be able to, you have to, to a certain degree, you got to be able to try to predict what could happen and then, uh, then understand that there's still unexpected things that's going to happen. And when those unexpected things get happening, and you get hit, how do you continue to move forward? How do you continue to overcome those challenges that happen throughout life and continue to move forward? You know, if you, you know, if you have kids, you know, or if you're married, you might end up getting a divorce, right? You might have somebody who's trying to take custody of your kids. You might have a business where you go bankrupt, right? You might, it, it, there's going to be certain things that happen throughout your life. And it's going to be about you just continuously understanding that I got to keep moving forward. I can't give up. How do you keep moving forward? And that's the one, of, and that is one of the biggest keys that I've learned about the world's most successful people is that. They just kept going. It's not that they got to where they got to. I don't care if it's Richard Branson. I don't care if it's Oprah. I don't care if it's Tony Robbins. I don't, you know, I'm Ty Lopez. Uh, 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 you know, Gary V. I don't care if we're talking about. Uh, I don't care if we're talking about uh, Nike. I don't, I, you know, Mary Kay. I don't care who we're talking about. They face some challenges throughout their life. They face some challenges throughout building the, the, these, you know, businesses, right? Businesses face it, individual people face it, but the whole idea and mindset as approach is, okay, how do I continue to keep moving forward? What do I have to do to continue to keep moving forward? And that's why, you know, the, the when we talked about overcoming obstacles, that's so important because that's the specific tactical strategies that you can use. But it's also important to don't forget just the overall mindset because a lot of people just get caught up in the, ta the tactical to-dos. The to, to the, the to do's could change and it could be different. But if your overall mindset is okay, each and every day I have to focus on being productive. You know, if you looked at my taglines now, you know, through, throughout my emails, that it's changed now. My tagline, my tagline now at the end of my emails, every emails is you know making every day more productive. And and the reason I changed it to making every day more productive is because. You it's, it's important for you to continuously move forward and make progress every day, even in spite of the obstacles that could happen. Still continuously find a way to overcome those obstacles, to move forward. Just like Rocky said, that's how winning is done. You know, so you got to find ways to continuously make progress every day. You know, that's the, that's the reason why this program is called More Productive Days, because it's about being more productive each and every day. It's not about being more productive tomorrow. You know, as far as as far as being the maximum amount of productive tomorrow. Actually, I wouldn't even recommend you even try to do that, because anytime you try to just overwhelm yourself, you know, like like we've learned a lot throughout throughout this entire course. Right. And if you try to do everything tomorrow, then you can overwhelm yourself and you might not end up doing anything. I would re rather you recommend you just try to do a few things, you know, try to do a few things at a time. Look at the point of your, look at the point of your life where that, that's hurting you the most and then start with those things. Maybe, maybe you might not get as distracted, right? So you might not need to start with that, with, with that module, that video, right? But but you might notice that you have a lot of negative self talk and negative self doubt. So maybe you start with that video. So you know. So it's really ideally you could you know you want to look through everything, but go you know you go through everything. So if you missed any videos, go back and watch those videos because it's going to be important because that's how you're going to figure out okay what what your Achilles heel is. What 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 do you need to work on the most? So if you missed any videos, or if you just jump to this video, or just jump through the last few videos and miss some, go back, watch the videos that you missed, and you know you might learn something that will be able to that be that may able just to give you a little bit of tweak, just to make it a little bit better, help you with something a little bit more. And as you take things and work it each and every week, do that. Like I would I would recommend that going through this program. 
start off choosing the top three things that you feel like hurt you the most. It might be distractions. It might be negative self-talk. It might be, you know, you don't have enough clarity. You know, in an earlier, earlier module, we talked about, you know, how to rejuvenate yourself and eat healthier and have proper nutrition. You might find yourself lacking energy. So you need so you need to rejuvenate yourself. Why are you waking up tired each each and every day? Why are you going through the day tired? So that's why this whole program was put together in a very specific and strategic way to help you understand and help you be more productive in every different area possible. It helps get your mindset and your philosophy straight so you can be able to be clear about your goals. Go go through and, and, and attack your goals or go through and get your goals with confidence, right? The, the, the specific things that you need to have and, and things you need to think about in order to be more productive, you know, throughout your year, throughout your week, throughout your month, throughout your day, moment to moment, right? You know, it's about the energy and rejuvenation. I think a lot of programs even leave that out where you're trying to be productive, but how can you be productive when you're tired? You tell me that. How can you try to get things done when you don't feel like doing it? Have you ever had a time where you just like didn't feel like doing it because you was tired? Maybe you have to go to work or maybe you have to do something. You have to go to a meeting. And you're like, I don't even feel like doing this right now. And you try to avoid it. You try not to talk to people. You know, so you know how it is when you're tired. So that's so that's why we looked at this from every single angle that we can get it from, that we can look from, from that. And that's what these years and of research and studying and, and being a part of courses and learning and having personal conversations with millionaires. That's what that's that's what I wanted to do was really give you a a a complete program that had that gives you everything that you need to know in order to go out and be successful. Right. So when overall when it comes to overcoming life challenges, you know, just have the mindset that obstacles will come. But how can I get over this and move forward each and every day. How can I have more productive days? How can I make progress? As long as you approach each and every day like that, today's going to be a good day. I will make more progress on my goals today. I will make sure that I remove my distractions today. I'll make and this is this is sort of we talked we talked a little bit about this in an earlier video, right? Where we said what are some of my, you know, what some of the things I say, affirmations, incantations, right? You know, um today is going to be a good day. These are some things, right? You know, today I will make out today I will make progress on my goals. Today I will make progress on, you know, um on my health. Today I will today I will um I will help more people and I'll help more people at my job. So I'll, today I will help more people throughout um, my my business. Today, you know, today is gonna be a great day. So you know, just say whatever whatever gets you excited, whatever gets you juiced. You don't have to use some of those things, but just whatever's gonna get you excited, get you juiced about the day. That's gonna help you overcome those obstacles. That's gonna give you the emotional juice that you need in order to beat those obstacles. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna be, it's gonna, your emotions is was either what's gonna help you or it's gonna, it's gonna hinder you. So you know, so hopefully this this course was very, very uh, informative for you. And it, 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 this course is really about helping you change your habits, your routines, um, as much as we went through about mindset and everything. But it's really helping you learn, but also actually go out and implement because that's what's really going to make the difference in your life. All right. So um, until I see you, until I see you in some of our um, our, our other forums or, or in the community, uh, make sure that you comment, put your comments down below. Um, and just continue to grind, continue to make things happen, stay plugged into to this community because this, these are all people who are achieving, all people who are continually uh, continuously grinding, continuously making things happen. Make sure that you um, also listen to the coaching calls as well that's included within the program. Make sure that you take advantage of you know, of, 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 of any other programs, not even necessarily just mine, but just books and programs and just continuously feed your mind because the more you learn, the more you go out and try, the more confidence, the more competence you get, the more competence you, the more competent you get, um, the, the more confidence you will have to overcome these obstacles, the more emotional juice you're going to have to overcome these obstacles. And ultimately having all of that, with all of that being said, 
you're going to make more progress every day and have more productive days. It's been an honor of, of being able to serve you throughout this course. If you have any questions for me, I'll be down in the community answering any questions. And until I see you next time, continuously go out there, continuously grind, continuously make more progress, have more productive days, and I'll see you soon. All right. Woo! And that was the official end of the five-week course. All right. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> All right, so um, so it's it's really been it's really been an honor. Let me put myself back on for a minute. Um, hold on. All right, let's see. Let's see if we could put let's see if we could put me back on here. All right, woo! All right, so it is it's really been an honor to um you know to to serve you all i appreciate everybody who's um you know everyone you know here and you know other people who couldn't make it but they you know they've been watching the replays um i appreciate you for you know for you know taking a chance and, and coming in the course and being attentive to it um you know this is really um this is really the, the second online course that i had that i that i've created and, um, you know, and this is just a lot of, you know, my life experiences and things that I've done. So um, to to really honor everybody and, um, you know, who's on here and who really wanted to who really took this seriously. Um, everything that I said that um, that I'm going to do for you for being a part of this is is I, I'm going to uphold my commitment. So, you know, you're going you're gonna to get the, the free coaching calls. Um, if you need to, if you need to call me personally and talk to me about a situation, um, you know, I'll help you be more productive about a situation. All the stuff that we went through, this is stuff that I have in my mind. Like these, these, these are frameworks. This is stuff that I know. So if it's a particular area that you need help in, you know, I, you know, you can call me and I'll and I'll help you with that. Um, you know, we're gonna have a community as well, um, where as more people are gonna start becoming a part of this program, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that. Um, you know, you all will be able to help keep the community going, keep the community alive. Because right now, you know, this is really still just internal because I haven't really been promoting it like that because I wanted to focus on you guys. Right. I want to focus on you all and, you know, and help you with your situation, because what I want to happen is, you know, I, I want you to be able to be my success stories. So, you know, so what's going to happen is. Um, I, I want to be able to, uh, I want you all to start having some, some success with this stuff. You know, even if it's one area, I don't want you to think that you have to implement everything in order to be a success story. You know, even if you just went a week, you know, you know, just making sure that you are, you know, you use block time and you focus for the whole, for, for 30 minutes, you know, cause if, mind you, if it's anything that I talked about throughout the series too, that you feel like you, it's hard to implement, um, it's hard to implement for um, for the exact way that I said it. Then start smaller. You can always start smaller. Like if it's hard for you to pay attention for fifty minutes for an hour, well, focus for thirty minutes. You know, if it's hard for you to turn off all the notifications in your phone, okay, well, well, turn off Instagram at least. Turn off something. You know, right? Like so, like so. If it's hard for you to do certain things, then you can always start smaller and then work your way back up. And um, that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned, too, because I always used to be like, oh, it's so frustrating. I keep failing. It's hard for me to stay focused. It's hard for me to do this and that. But you can always start small and then work your way back up. Um, but, yeah, but I'm going to honor that commitment. And then um, and then eventually, um, I think I'm going to start it probably next year where I'm going to do a monthly um, membership program. And it's monthly membership productivity program. I don't even know, like, the name of it. I have any. Of it. I just know I want to do one. And um, so because you know that being productive is easy, you could do it once or twice and, you know, you'd be good. But how do you cons consistently stay sustained, sustain that? And um, so what I want to do is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a monthly membership program. I have no idea what I'm going to charge for it yet, but pretty much it's just going to be monthly training. And um, and um, but 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 for going through this program, for the group of people that went through the program, everybody's going to get access to that for free for the rest of your life. Like that's what's gonna happen, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, and um, 
And um, you know, and uh, you know, it's worth it. You know, and that's because I, 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 you know, I appreciate you all for doing that. So as you know, you're gonna start seeing me, especially within this next year. Man, it's it's gonna be. Trust me, it's gonna be huge. You you know, you're gonna start seeing me out there a lot more, and um, you know, you're gonna see me with gurus a lot more, learning a lot more, a lot of things more, a lot of things are gonna be happening. So. Um, but, um, but you guys decide to take a chance on me and you decide to take a chance on yourself to really learn some things, you know, um, but the, uh, my only stipulation is I want you to have success. So you have to use this stuff and be my testimonials. Okay. Can you, can you do that? All right. Yes, that All right. Was easy. All right. Just know that, um, you need to go ahead and block a schedule of time, a month, a week, a bi-weekly just to call me and make sure that, you know, kind of like you did the other day or whatever, like, mm. I'm, I'm probably going to need, need that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I got you. You know, all of this stuff is, um, all of, all, you know, all the things that we learn, you know, if it's anything, you know, that I'm helping, I'm coaching with, it's going to be the stuff that we learned in this program. Because it's going to be, because um, none of this stuff, like I, like, I literally, you know, gave you everything. This is nothing that I'm holding back. So, um, you know, so... You know, I mean, it's it's gonna be it's there's gonna be times where it's gonna be hard, but um, you know, I'm here. You know, I'm here. You know, and we have each other, right? You know, we we have we have each other here. That's in the community. It's gonna be people commenting and posting, but just continuously keep yourself engaged, and um, you know, you'll be fine. But I want you, I want you, I want you guys, um, I want you all to be be my testimonials. Okay, so you know, so go out here, make things happen. Um, as far as um, as far as some of the things that's coming up, um, this week. Um, it's gonna be a very busy week. I'm actually getting married on Friday, so yeah. Thank you, thank you. Right, so you're gonna see. Um, so you can if you probably if you've been looking at my social media, you probably been seeing pictures and stuff like that. Um, but you're gonna see. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna happen. Um, I think I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna Facebook live it and I'm a I'm an Instagram story. So I'm gonna stream it live the wedding. So it's gonna be crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be crazy. Um, so, so I'm gonna be very busy this yeah, week. That's your way of saying we not invited, but we invited. <laughs> you are. <laughs> listen, you're gonna have a better seat than anybody in the house because you're gonna be front rows streamed. Uh -huh. Better uh -huh. seats. <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah. So, so that, so that's gonna be fun. But yeah, this is gonna be a, a busy week. Um, and then, um, I'll let you all know probably sometime throughout this week. When the first call is gonna be in the call, like I said, it's gonna it's gonna be short, maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, but I'll probably teach like a little nuance point or something that um, I really couldn't get into throughout the weeks. But overall, it's gonna be covered in what we did throughout the program. But if it's something that I felt like I either learned or something that I need to tell you more about, that's what I want to use these. That's what I want to use these coaching calls for. Or if it's something specifically like yo Terrell. Uh, this week, and that's what we, and that's what we're gonna use. Um, the, that's that's what you could use these calls for two patients that we're gonna do. So this is gonna be okay. like for the next five weeks. Um, and I don't know if it'll be the same time or, or what, but I'll let you know. Um, when we'll do it, and then um, that's where you can say, hey, you know, I need some help with this. This is specifically what I'm working on. Da da da, and um, I'll help you with it that way. So um, so yeah, so so that's what we have. Um, and, um, so just, yeah, so just stay glued to your email. Um, is we, next Sunday is not going to be anything because obviously I'm getting married on Friday. So it's going to, I'm going to still be sort of trying to get my head together throughout the, uh, for the weekend. Um, but, um, probably, but more than likely that next weekend, um, we may start, we'll start with the first call and then we'll do it. And then we'll do, um, five calls for the next five weeks. Is it still going to be through Skype? Um, I don't know. I haven't figured that part out yet. So I'll let you know if it's still gonna be Skype or it's gonna be dial in. You can call in or uh, or whatever the case is. So um, I'll do that. Also, lastly, to be looking for a survey. Um, I'm I'm gonna create a survey sometime this week. I I might work on it today, but um, I'm gonna create a survey sometime this week. And um, I just want to get your thoughts and your feedback on the program. So the next time when I upgrade it. Oh, and and that's another thing too. I'm gonna be upgrading this program every so often. So every time I upgrade it, I, I might add like new. Um, I'm add, I might if I decide to add, I probably won't add new modules. But if I add new bonuses, you'll get access to the new bonus. Like I might create because I've been thinking about creating a um, uh, maybe like a habits, maybe like either like some kind of maybe like a habit habits series or a habits webinar or a habits video something where you could 
because I really want to dive deep, deep, dive deep more in, into um, habits. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's very important. Um, you said you're going to help us create a timeline to create better habits. Right. So what you can do is too, and if you have any ideas, I can like I'll I can do that. Like I can help. Um, you know, uh, I can I can probably create a video. Or I can do something where, you know, it'll be able to. Um, I'll be able to help you more with habits and and things that I need you. But I, I think that's I think that uh, that's really one of the core concepts out of really being more productive is you have to be productive consistently and it has to be a habit. So um, yeah. So anyway, every time I upgrade the program. You'll get it for completely free, so you don't have to worry about that as well. Um, Did you ever think I, about the certificates for later? Um, for later you know what? The other guy that was on here too, um, Antoine, he asked about the the certificates too. Um, I didn't think about that, but um, but what I'll do is um, um, I'll keep that um, I'll keep that in mind. Um, it's possibly I may do it. I mean, if if people keep you know requesting it and it seems like something that's important. Um, then, um, you know, I'll, I'll get a certificate. Um, but being the fact that you went through the course, if I decide to do certificates at some point in time in the future, like you'll just get it because you went through the course already. You know, you'll get it to patients, you know, because y'all have been through the course too. Um, so, yeah, so that's, so that's pretty much it. So stay, um, you know, stay glued to your email. Look, stay glued to, you know, social media stuff. You'll see what's going on. And um, the next time, you know, Unless you need to talk to me ahead of time, you know, about something that you have going on that you need help with um, to make progress. Um, the next time we'll talk will be when we do um, when when we do the first call. OK, but but I'll talk to you, you know, of course, through email and, you know, all right, what's going on, what's happening. OK. All right. Thanks. All right. So see you all. See you all soon. And um, and, I, you know, talk to you all soon as well. So. Continue, remember, go through. I'm oh, also, too, last real, real quick thing. I'm gonna upload these. Um, since this is the last video, I'm gonna upload the rest of the videos. Um, I'm a, I'm and I'm gonna probably within like the my goal is within the next few weeks just to start um breaking these videos down and start putting it up in the right way so you'll be able to view it on the website. Um, but um, just start using this stuff because I want you guys to be my testimonials, okay? Just a tip, can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Just a tip, um, because I'm more of like a in-classroom type of person, right. um, it kind of makes it, I don't want to say hard, but I like the engaging portion gotcha. um, that you do. So when you do your PowerPoint, are you able to like split screen so that we can see you talking and engaging uh, and okay. see what's going on? Okay. I think, um, you like that part? I, yeah. So like video, like 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 sort sort of like this, like a video. Like how, yeah, like how you do it on your YouTube page. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. So maybe as we do the calls, you know, I can do I can do the calls more like this. You know, where I'm sort of talking to you and you know, can see see everybody. So um, so yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's no problem. Whatever whatever's most helpful to you. You know, I mean, that's that's what I'm about. So if if this is more engaging and it's more helpful just to be on video. That's cool. I have no problem doing that. Cool, so, all right. So, all right. All right so, I talk. To, so, I talk to you soon. See you soon. And um, keep 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 your eyes peeled on your emails and stuff. And um, I'll let you know when's the next time we'll we'll be meeting up. Okay. Ten four. All right. Later. Bye. Bye.